Hello and welcome! As you maybe remember from my last video, I got quite a lot of main boards donated to the channel. I am slowly going through those boards one by one and today I would like to move on and take a look onto this Socket 370 ATX main board. It is an MSI board, model MS6159 version 1. First what we see is that there is no AGP slot on this board because it has an integrated ATI Rage Pro Turbo chip. It is connected through the AGP bus and there is no additional AGP slot for an external card. The onboard graphics chip is equipped with 8 MB of video memory. The chipset is an Intel 440LX, the predecessor of the famous 440BX, which serves the CPU through a Socket 370. Officially, this chipset supports only 66 MHz frontside bus and is designed for Pentium 2 and Celeron CPUs up to a Mendocino core. The switching power supply maybe supports wider range of voltages, so theoretically this board would even support a copper mine based Pentium 3 CPUs. But there are some missing capacitors in the CPU power supply circuit, which potentially could be upgraded to provide better voltage stability. Otherwise, the capacitors look very good for the age. They don't seem to be leaky or bulgy. Very nice. On the back, the board looks good as well. There are some small scratches, but they seem to be on the surface only. This is a compact micro ATX board, which still has an ISO slot available, which is quite nice to have in the retro builds for all kind of ISO sound cards, for example. This can be helpful because the onboard Creative Sound Blaster PCI-128 is not the best when talking about DOS games. This chip is actually a renamed Ensonic Audio PCI, which Creative used back in the days after buying Ensonic Company. ES in ES1373 stands for Ensonic, but it performs very poorly when it comes to FM sound and Yamaha Opel 3 emulation in DOS. On the other side, this board has everything already on board what is needed to build a decent retro gaming PC from around 1996-1997. Even the ATI 3D Rage Pro with some later version drivers was ok for the first generation of 3D games. Let's see where we get today with this board. First of all, the board is very dusty. This is a good opportunity to test the electrical air blower, which I bought recently. I usually used cans of compressed air, so let's see how this device does the job. It works in three power steps and the highest one is more or less on par with the compressed air can, I would say. However, it is also quite noisy. On the other hand, I can simply recharge it over USB and will not throw away empty cans anymore. What is better for the nature, I guess? At least it is better for the hobby budget. Well, the blower did a good job. I used a brush here and there as well, but the board is quite clean again. As you see, the memory slot is missing a plastic clip on one side. Luckily, I have one or two similar ones in my spare parts. So, almost as good as new. Now let's give it a try. As I said, the chipset i440LX, which is used here, is designed for 66 MHz CPUs up to Celeron Mendocino. I have one 466 MHz variant. And once again, look how flat the whole setup looks, even with a CPU cooler. And this board already has everything on board. VGA, sound, it is ready to be used. Here I have one 256 MB SD memory module. I will not install the second one for now. Ok, this board is alive. But obviously has problems detecting the memory module properly. It shows only half the memory. Well, 256 MB is too much for this setup anyway. Let's go with 2 times 64 MB modules instead. This way we can also check that both slots are working properly. Also, let's add the Compact Flash to IDE adapter to try to boot into DOS. So, DOS has been booted. The BIOS detected both 64MB memory modules properly, showing total size of 128MB. Very nice. 
and Doom is running as well. And shows us 840 points. That is okay for the setup um, as is, without any optimization. Quake is also running. And is finishing the benchmark at resolution 640x480 at 14.7 fps. Those numbers are okay, but not really impressive. There is a lot of space for improvement. Just as an example, let's use the FastVid tool to get some boost. I will not go into details, because Phil from Phil's Computer Lab made a nice video about it many years ago. If you are interested, I'll put the link into the description. For this system, the tweak alone means about 15% better result in Doom and mind-blowing almost 90% improvement in Quake with 27.6 FPS versus previous 14.7 FPS without FastFit. As you see, there is a lot of potential which can be unlocked using software on this system. This is very exciting without a doubt, but I would try to do something else today. As I mentioned earlier, the chipset i440LX, which is used here, is designed to run at 66 MHz and supports CPUs only up to Celeron Mendocino. I would like to try to get a copper mine CPU running on this board and see if newer Pentium 3 and higher clocked Celeron CPUs would run here as well. First of all, we need to check the voltage. Copper mine CPUs are more efficient and need lower voltage. The currently installed Celeron Mendocino requires 2 volts exactly, and this is what we get. Let's try to install a Pentium 3 800 copper mine CPU, which needs 1.7 volts. And we are getting 1.7 volts, perfect. However, the system doesn't post and the monitor gets no signal. During my investigation, I stumbled upon two articles about modifications of slot 1 to socket 370 adapters, also known as SlotCat, so that they are capable to run with copper mine CPUs. One is a very nice and detailed thread about various SlotCat adapters made by Matt on the German DOS Reloaded DE forum, Another one is a very old article on Tom's hardware. I put both links into the description in case you are interested. So basically it looks like there are some differences between Mendocino and Coppermine CPUs which can be worked around by the socket modifications. Some are more complicated, the others are easier. Let's start with the easiest first, the reset pin. Looks like Intel made some changes to ensure that Coppermine was incompatible to Mendocino. On Coppermine CPUs, the reset pin was placed at a new location, AH4, and the old location, X4, uh, known from previous CPU models, was called reset2. On Coppermine, it has no official function anymore, where the new reset pin was unused on the older CPUs. Obviously, Without proper reset signal, the CPU wouldn't start, so with a piece of wire, I'll connect the old reset pin, which is used for Mendocino, with the new reset pin, which is used on the copper mine. This way, both types of CPUs would get a proper reset signal. And it looks like the system started to post. However, it didn't go too far, as you see, the CPU doesn't get detected properly, and the system hangs. No problem, let's patch the BIOS and extend the list of supported CPUs. I already made a video about simple award BIOS patching. If you are interested, the link is in the description. So I used the BIOS patcher to add support for the newer CPUs. Inserted the BIOS IC back and the system started to post fully reporting a Pentium 3 copper mine at 400 MHz. If you remember, I used 800 MHz CPU, however this main board runs with 66 MHz frontside bus. The CPU which I use is made for 133 MHz frontside bus and runs with multiplier of 6. Well, 6 times 66 uh, makes 400 MHz. Everything's right. This main board provides settings for up to 83 MHz frontside bus, either per jumpers or using BIOS settings. The fastest Coppermine Celeron CPU, as far as I know, is this 766MHz one. It has a very high multiplier of 11.5. Theoretically, at 83MHz frontside bus, it could reach 960MHz. 
Well, in theory. First of all, the i440LX chipset is not able to provide clock dividers for PCI and AGP bus, so with 83 MHz those buses would be massively overclocked. Second, we don't know if the CPUs which I have are good overclockers and how they would behave in this board. But even with stock clock at 766 MHz it would be very interesting to see how it would compete against lower clocked Pentium 3 CPUs with twice the cache. Remember, Pentium 3 CPUs are specified for much higher front side bus um, of 100 and 133 MHz, which this board cannot provide. And with obviously lower internal multiplier, the effective clock of Pentium 3 CPUs would be halved at 66 MHz front side bus. Before starting any tests with copper mine CPUs, off camera I made some benchmarks with the Mendocino Celeron 466 in DOS. And then I wanted to install Windows 98 to also make some testing there. Unfortunately, I ran into some issues. First of all, there is one unknown PCI device for which I didn't find any drivers or information. The device with vendor ID 4348 and device ID 4447, I don't know what it is. I installed all chipset drivers, but Windows continued to report it as an unknown PCI card and I had no choice but to tell the system to just ignore it. If you know what it is, please write a comment below. The other problem was the sound card driver. I wanted to be sure that everything works fine before I do any experiments with the Copamine CPUs. I tried all kinds of stuff, different drivers and whatnot, but always ran into this blue screen and the error that the SB PCI interrupt has been routed incorrectly by the system. Windows booted fine and otherwise everything seemed to work, but without any sound. After a very careful search I found a teeny tiny scratch on the back of the mainboard, which looked harmless, like only on the surface. However, under the microscope I could clearly see a damaged trace. It was nearly impossible to see it with a naked eye, really, I looked over it a couple of times before I grabbed out my microscope. Well, at least it was not as bad that I wouldn't be able to fix it with a piece of wire. Only one trace was really cut, the traces around were just scratched, but I still used the opportunity to tin those too. And after that fix has been done, the sound card instantly worked and I continued with my tests in Windows 98. I used GL Quake, which was not rendered properly, but that seems to be a known issue and is not explicitly for this setup. I also benchmarked Quake 2 and 3D Mark 99. Both were not super fast due to the quite slow graphics card, but ran stable and without any visual glitches. After everything worked as it should with the Mendocino Celeron 466, I switched to the Coppermine Celeron 766. Uh, that was able to finish all the DOS tests at 66 and 75 MHz frontside bus, but as soon as I started the benchmark in Windows 98, the whole system ran into serious issues. In 2D the system was absolutely stable, but as soon as I started any 3D application the system froze badly and had to be reset. I played with various BIOS settings, tried different ATI drivers, newer versions of BIOS. By the way, on the Retro Web project not only a Word BIOS is available for this board, but also one from AMI. I played uh, with all of them with no success. The system froze as soon as OpenGL or Direct3D initialization happened. I thought that the issue could have something to do with the unstable CPU voltage. Well, there was not a lot of hope that this could be the reason, because Coppermine CPUs are actually less power hungry than Mendocino. However, they could be more sensitive to voltage ripple, so I decided to recap this board and also add the missing capacitors. But the caps which I desoldered from the board were totally fine. The capacitance was a little bit off, but that's not critical and ESR, which is critical, was still quite low. So there was no real point for recapping and, well, it obviously didn't change anything as expected. The system continued to crash in all 3D applications. After a lot of trial and fail I decided to dig out another mainboard which I saved for one retro PC project Say hello to this very nice AOPEN MX3L. This is a very similar mainboard with the same i440LX chipset, but it has no graphics card on board. 
Instead, it has a proper AGP slot for external graphics card, which is even better. Also, I personally prefer this board over MSI, not only because of the AGP slot, but also because of, in my opinion, much better sound chip, the ESS Solo 1, which has a lot better DOS compatibility and FM sound than the creative chip on the MSI board. Otherwise, the boards are very similar. I didn't use this A open board yet, because it has one loose capacitor half stripped of the board, but replacing that one was an easy task. Funny enough, the capacitor was still showing proper values, despite that one leg was pulled halfway out of the body. Anyway, it was better to replace it. To keep the setup as similar as possible, I used a dedicated ATI 3D Rage Pro, also on this board. Since the configuration was very similar, I also didn't need to reinstall Windows once again. Like on MSI previously, I used a copper mine CPU, in this case the Spentium 3600, to measure the voltage first. To my surprise, not only was the voltage right, but suddenly the system started to post. That was quite unexpected. Then I tried another copper mine, this time Celeron 766 once again, and there it didn't post, just like on the MSI board first. The Pentium 3 600, which um, worked in this board without any modification, turned out to be from an earlier revision. It looks on the bottom also completely different from all the other copper mine CPUs, as you see. I found that quite interesting and it looked like Intel made those incompatible changes in later revisions, probably to be sure that no copper mine CPUs would work in such boards. Maybe that didn't have only marketing reasons. Why do I think so? Well, of course, I had to make the same modification on the A open board, which I did on the MSI previously, to be able to use other copper mine CPUs as well. And as soon as the reset pin were connected accordingly, also this board booted properly. Here, even BIOS was already able to detect the CPU more or less properly. It reported a Pentium 3 instead of Celeron, but that wasn't critical. The system booted and ran DOS benchmarks once again absolutely stable, and in Windows I was facing the same problems as on the MSI board. As soon as anything with 3D acceleration started, the system locked hard. So, this seems not to be an issue specific to the MSI board. And after some reading once again about differences between Mendocino and Coppermine, I decided to add two pull-down resistors to RTT control and SLU control pins of the CPU, which were unused on older CPUs, but on Coppermine were signaling the availability of so-called AGTL plus termination if pulled down. It is about the type of transistor logic termination, and actually, if a mainboard doesn't provide such termination type, it shouldn't report it, or it could end up in heavy instability of the system. Well, anyway, out of desperation, I gave it a try and added two pull-down resistors on pins E27 and S35. That was a mistake. The system became unstable as expected and crashed in Windows a couple of times, even during the start into blue screen. Unfortunately, it killed the file allocation table on the compact flashcard and I had to reformat the drive and reinstall everything. Of course, after I removed those pull-down resistors again. That was a bad idea. However, it gave me another interesting hint. Windows 98 SE has a built-in driver for the ATI 3D Rage Pro graphics card. And after a clean installation of Windows, which I had to do, I decided to try that one. And to my surprise, all 3D applications did actually work. It was terribly slow, even in GL Quake, but it didn't crash. Also 3D Mark 99 did run. It was slow again and reported many missing features, but it didn't crash. As soon as I updated the driver to any official ATI version, I tried various, the system hung whenever I started anything what used 3D graphic acceleration. So I decided to try another graphics card. This is a 3DFX Velocity 100, also known under the name 3DFX Voodoo 3 1000. 
It is um, basically a Voodoo 3 2000 with 8 instead of 16 megabytes of video memory and per software deactivated TMU, which can be easily switched in the Windows registry. Anyway, this is maybe worth a separate video, but the point in this one is that this card absolutely worked. The system was fast and rock solid. All the benchmarks did work fine. GL Quake, Quake 2, 3D Mark 99, whatever. Everything was stable. But what was it? Why didn't Rage Pro work and Voodoo 3 did? What is the difference? You see, Voodoo 3 is not really an AGP graphics card. It uses AGP port physically, but doesn't use any AGP features. It is a PCI card in disguise, and 3DFX produced it for AGP slots just because of marketing. It would sell a lot better if everybody would think that this was made for new and shiny AGP slot, which everybody was switching to back then. So the Rage Pro vs Voodoo 3 was also a question of AGP vs PCI. And Maybe Windows 98 SE built-in Rage Pro driver didn't activate some AGP-related bits, so the card was able to work as a slow PCI card. To confirm my suspicion, I went through the graphics cards which I have and found these two NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200 cards, one as PCI and one as AGP. This is as similar as I could do. Unfortunately, I have no ATI Rage Pro PCI at hand. But these NVIDIA cards are more or less the same in two variants, and I know that FX 5200 really uses AGP features. First, I tested the PCI card. The driver pack was 4523, and I'm happy to say that GL Quake as well as Quake 2 did run just fine. However, 3D Mark 99 showed only black screen. Interestingly, when running in demo mode, it showed some overlay sprites, but the image itself remained black. However, this could be a driver issue, though. The system also didn't hang. It, I could return from uh, the black screen by pressing escape. I guess this was something unrelated to the previous issue, which occurred with the Rage Pro. So I replaced the PCI FX 5200 by the AGP version and Windows didn't even boot. It hung already during the start. Of course, I removed the drivers and tried to reinstall those, but all the same, with the AGP FX 5200, Windows didn't even start. And I know that this card is fully working. I tested it in another system. So what is the conclusion? I think there is some kind of incompatibility between AGP 440LX chipset and Coppermine CPUs. One idea was that the graphics drivers maybe use newer features of the CPU, like SSE, which Mendocino didn't have and which don't work properly on 440LX. I wrote a small program in Assembler to deactivate SSE before booting Windows, but that didn't make any difference, so I'm still not sure about that. And We'll have to investigate more in that direction. For now, what I have is that with a small modification you can use Coppermine CPUs on such boards to some extent. It works fine in DOS, with 3DFX Voodoo 3 it works also fine in Windows, and let's be honest, this board with a fast Coppermine CPU and a 3DFX Voodoo 3 is a nice beast for a retro gaming PC, but still, there is that feeling of unsatisfied curiosity, which bothers me. Is it generally possible to run Coppermine CPUs on any Intel 440LX chipset mainboards? If you know one, please write into the comments. I'm really curious about it. Also, there is that one open question about the unknown PCI device, which was reported on both boards under the same vendor ID, 4348 and device ID 4447. I still don't know what it is. Maybe you know? Could it be somehow related with the AGP problem? Some missing bits? Don't know. If I have an update on this project, I'll let you know. And for today, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this trip down the rabbit hole. And as always, thank you for watching and goodbye.